This, my friends, is a flat pack kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how I did it. you about this kitchen. This kitchen was born out of a tight budget. We started with a flat pack and I changed a few things to give it that really bespoke designer feel and added a few elements to give it the French feel. So when you're thinking about designing your French kitchen, Colours would be white, cream, soft grey, very soft green, to give it a really dreamy, open feel. Now this kitchen, I wanted that classic look. I stuck with cream and white. And would you believe, it looks huge. This is only maybe 14 square metres. Literally a tiny kitchen. Down this flat pack, I've removed the shelves. I've replaced it with glass. We added one LED up there, and I've put a mirror at the back. All of that reflects light. It gives a place where you can put your beautiful glassware to show off, because that's another thing that the French use. You know, they use wine in their cooking, they entertain, and it's a space where you can really put your bohemian crystal glasses to show and the light gives beautiful ambience to this room. And another thing how you could really um, make a flat pack look fabulous, simple hardware. Change out the old or the simple hardware, get yourself some beautiful, these ones are just pewter ones. I bought that at Ikea. Simple, simple little thing like that makes this look so much more bespoke. And if there is at all a thing that you can afford that you would want to spend money on, is a big stove. Back in the day, French had big open fire with a chimney um, or really an eiger stove. And to kind of mimic the same effect, a big gas or electric cooker is great. Get a range hood to match, so it gives you that kind of same feeling. Um, and then obviously there's the extra added benefit of some lighting which is just illuminating on your food and it's just beautiful. When designing your French kitchen, think about lighting. Lighting is so important in any decorating, decorating scheme. In this kitchen, I chose to use a, a painted chandelier with a little bit of crystal. Now with a flat pack, one sometimes left with gaps. You get the size that you get. Can't really choose to fill that in. Now, if you're not going to cover it with a cover plate, I chose to use a painted MDF piece of wood. I blocked that little gap off, and I bought two, only two pieces of turned balustrade. Bought that at my local hardware store. We painted it white, chopped it off so it's the correct size, and we screwed it to the back of that little plank and it flanks the stove and it mimics the front legs that we've done with the same and it looks great. You'll see at the end of the bench island I've put some turned legs. That again was just veranda posts that I bought at my local hardware store. Chopped them to the size, painted it white, I added a little moulding, little carved trim nailed that on, painted it white, sanded it back to give it a little bit of a weathered look and it looks great. It just adds to the whole French feeling. So remember, moulding, carved items, carved architectural features, light colours, beautiful glamorous lighting, um, display your beautiful glasses and you have a French kitchen in no time. 
So as you can see, this is a working kitchen. Everything that's displayed is decorative, but it gets used daily. From the mixer, cookbooks, utensils, oils, your uh, chopping boards, blenders, serviettes. Everything there is used. Well, it lets it so that it looks pretty as well. So for the splashback in this kitchen, I chose MDF Tongue and Groove boards. Two reasons. I wanted to kind of marry the bench island which is covered in that same tongue and groove. I wanted to marry this with the kitchen. I chose to put it behind there. And then the second reason was it was easy and very cost effective. A good splashback will fork you up a few hundred dollars. Whereas this I think was maybe $40 for a sheet, a whole sheet. And uh, we cut it to, fought to size, painted it white, and you glue it on with some construction glue. That is DIY magic. But I was stuck with a little bit of a gap between that and my stainless steel. I went to my local hardware store. They've got these beautiful molding strips in all sorts of carved patterns. I bought two lengths, $40 later, painted them white, stuck them in there with, again, construction glue. And it beautifully frames the stainless steel that kind of the whole kitchen unit brings that together beautifully. So another neat trick to add extra workspace, workspace to your kitchen is a little trolley. This was an IKEA find, painted it white, stuck it next to the bench island and it really gives a lot of extra space for cookbooks, fruit baskets that doesn't take up working space. beautiful element in my opinion you have to have it for a French kitchen is a butler sink they're not the greatest and the most wonderfulest thing in the world to clean it is but I find it's a bit tedious to clean and um, sometimes you know you've got to be careful with your crystal it can chip so easily but it's so beautiful if that is one thing that you can put in a kitchen to really get that French feel this would be it. Also have a look at some antique bronze or antique brass tapware. You are probably wondering where is the freezer. I will show you. Two cabinets, exact same. I removed all the shelves and we stuck the freezer in there. There we go. Freezer inside. You can integrate with the brackets. I chose not to because inside this door I stuck some chalkboard sticky paper for all those wonderful shopping lists. Everyone uses it and a place for extra books, medicines and all sorts of nasty stuff. We want to hide. A French kitchen you do not want to see all those messy bits and notes stuck onto your, your fridge. So that was my must have for this kitchen. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this kitchen tour and I hope I inspired you to look at flatbacks differently. Change knobs, put some mirrors and glass, lighting, few turns, mouldings and you will have a beautiful French kitchen that you can absolutely be proud of and love. I'm going to have some tea, like and subscribe and I'll see you back here next time.